There he, he is. is. Charlie Carbs and Cycling. <laughs> Welcome to our Woodlands Way and Coach House Drive time trial with Tori. So this part, we're just this is just the start of the warm up. You kind of turn right up ahead. And Woodlands Way, I think it's a two point. I'll get my Strava up and see the segment. I think it's 2.4k at 10%. So we got to. Oh, come on. But yeah, we're just going up Norton Summit here. Um, and you can see Harley's on the front, then it's Tori, then I'm here. And then we got Louis from London on the right and Dan, demonic Dan. Demonic Dan, <laughs> Strava <laughs> champion. He's behind as well. Um, it wasn't perfect win today, but I think it was, it was not too bad. How it was do you, okay. How do you feel it went, Tori? I mean, Woodlands, I think, is quite a challenging climb just because there's, there's like four big, four big kickers and like four big steep parts where it averages like 15 plus percent <laughs> and... Yeah, so it just starts right in here where you're turning right into. But I don't know, like I definitely didn't go full gas. I know I should have. Yeah, because you, you went to like past the segment as well. I think you could have <laughs> yeah, sped up a bit. Yeah, just kept going, um, um, gone full gas for just the Woodlands Way segment. But I reckon it went well. I mean, any time yeah. trial is good. It's good practice. I've got a lot to work on still. Like, But any time trial, I hadn't, I wanted to, I'm just like my goal at the moment is just to get on all the top 10 leaderboards. Yeah, so, it's pretty pretty solid. It's, a, it's probably one of the hardest climbs in I Adelaide. reckon, yeah. One of the hardest climbs. It's really hard to pace because there's so many like kickers where you need to mm. sort of put a lot of power down. And, and then, then it flattens off and then yeah. another big kicker. You got a bit of an advantage there because they redid the road surface, which is pretty nice yeah, at the bottom. You got like, rid of the cheese grater. Yeah. That was nice. A nice and smooth ride. We had a bit of power out, outage there, but I think you held 270, was it? So oh, my no, average watts were 252. Yeah, so it's pretty solid. What's that's that? So like good. about four watts per kilo for... I'll work that out now. So. Yeah, I think it's about four watts per kilo for 13 minutes, which is pretty solid. But you can see here the power spikes up, and then we get a bit of power drop out. But here we're doing about like 350, 360 watts. Yeah. Which I think is probably a bit too hard, like because the watts Maybe they did a bit. It. <laughs> yeah, but it's just so hard to pace because you you really need to go quite hard on these kickers, otherwise you lose too much time. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a di it's a different climb. I've done this one maybe four times. I had a bit of a good uh, cassette on the back there. I had a 42. So that definitely came in, came in use. Yeah, I was, I was had a thirty six twenty eight. So I was like forty cadence, and I couldn't get out of the saddle because I wanted some good footage. So it was absolutely horrible. Um, you can see Dan's on the right, looking very chilled. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what, when you talked to Holly this morning, what what sort of power did you say you wanted to sit on? Or well, we didn't really even talk it through. I was just yeah. like, because I've never really done an effort up here. So I was like, just get me top ten or something. I'll just get on your yeah. wheel. But. Kind of like later on, we I didn't really hold the wheel so well. We kind I kind of just rode next to Harley and then. Yeah, I guess the thing is it's so steep. Like even at ten percent, yeah, you don't get much draft at like twelve k's now. Climb. The first bit is good for drafting, I think. Yeah. But then when it just gets all these big steep bits, you kind of want to go go alone and go solo, I guess. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's hard to pace it like with someone else because they might be feeling a bit strong on the kickers and sort of accelerate, and that mm, might really ruin you. For sure. I know it's a, it's like it's one of those climbs also where you feel like the top ten is like so stretched out like because Nusha has eleven fifty eight or whatever, yeah, that's how it looks and then like the next person is like relatively close, but it's because it's such a hard climb to pace, people really like can blow up on it because mm. it goes what like five minutes in the top ten. So eleven fifty eight is Nusha in first place. I got third overall, so I got thirteen forty, and then we got someone in tenth place with fourteen forty six. So it's quite spread out. Yeah, quite, it's yeah a lot. It's uh, yeah, it's it's I, it's also not very popular. Like, people don't really like doing it because I think it's so I steep. I think they just don't people have the right gearing for it. To be honest, yeah, I'd say Tori probably has pretty good gearing. Like, if you're going fast, obviously you need less gears. But for me, I think like a thirty six twenty eight isn't really big enough because you end up just grinding and just like you just feel. <laughs> I've horrible. seen a lot of people walk this hill. I remember last year, two thousand seventeen, tour down under. They, we took a whole gang out there and they were walking like that. <laughs> yeah, I think Cycling Maven had to walk yeah, up there. <laughs> Maven. Good old Maven. He yeah. got up in the end. Yeah. But slow but steady wins the race. <laughs> yeah, as long as... You, I mean, if you make it up, like, even just, like, with, with walking, it's pretty impressive. Like, it's just so steep for so long. It's steep. But you can see we've turned now onto Woodlands Way and uh, this is where the four kickers are. Um, so there's, like, the first... They basically get progressively harder and the last one ends up being about 20%, which mm. is just really, really horrible. Um so what, what were you thinking about this moment? Were you suffering now? Because I think we're about like probably five, six minutes in. Yeah, I think I, I to be honest, I can't even remember. Like I was suffering, but I was kind of, it was just, I didn't like the pacing today. I mean, yeah. I know that I Do you think you would have gone better think, on your own or? 
like oh it's good having you guys out there but i just think because we didn't really plan it through we didn't know i didn't know what i was aiming for and on the yeah. flights i felt i could accelerate more and then if i was going behind harley's wheel like it was yeah it was just i mean it was a time trial i can always do another one and it was good like harley's been pacing me lots recently been doing lots of segments and getting out there yeah there's a lot more but, competition like because some mm. of Nusha's times, like, no one's really come close for ages, and now you've started to actually, like, challenge yeah. them. And there seems to be a lot more, like, spotlight. Because the guys, it seems like there's always people trying to get KOMs or whatever, but the girls don't seem as much, like... Yeah, because when I stole a queen up Kensington Road, which she then stole from me again, so I'm going to get it back. But, like, that had not been beaten for five years. Yeah, so. that's pretty, like... That's pretty unheard of in most of Adelaide. I mean, it's like this mm. climb, Damien Housen has it, and I don't think anyone will ever get it off him, to be honest. <laughs> but, like, Sorry. most of them are pretty, pretty like, contested for, but I think the women's side it needs to, like, people need to sort of get more, more competitive and just, like, mm. not have I, the fear of failing, I guess. Even that's the other thing. on Saturdays. I mean, I've been cycling, what, a year now, and there's, on Saturdays, I have a Super Elliot's group. They normally go, some go 12 minutes up Norton, some go 16. I just sit on the back for as long as I can, and... I think if there were more girls out there, it would be so good. We'd have more, like, competition for each other. And, like, if I know if I see a girl going by, like, bitch ain't going to beat me. <laughs> so I think they should come out. I mean, if yeah. you're sassy and you drop me, I don't care. If I drop you, lift your game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally kidding. But, like, you can't be uh, scared of failure because if you want to get better, you've got to have competition. You've got to... You've got to ride with people fast. Start somewhere, you? yeah. Otherwise, like, you get into sort of complacency of thinking like, you're the best. But, like, when you... When you get when people drop you, it gives you like this motivation and anger inside that you're like, I've got to get back, I've got to, yeah. got to beat them. And it's just like good healthy healthy competition. I mean, I don't do racing, and yeah. this I wish there was racing up here. I think that's the best form of racing. Yeah, this is like the most and... most true like way of like judging your fitness, I guess. Yeah, because like anyone can go fast down a hill. Anyone can be an idiot and go like hundred k's an hour. Yeah, but that's but this a bit is fast. this is like real fitness, like going smashing up climbs. Yeah. But you can see here that Tori's cadence is still, like, 80 at, like, 9Ks an hour, which is pretty crazy. Like, I think I was down to, like, 35 or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely Seems horrible. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not really following, following much advice for Harley's here. But, no, nah, it's um, it's one of those climbs where I feel like even if you have, like, a 34-42, which Tori has, you're still going to be slightly grinding. Like, you're never going to be able to spin mm. 100 cadence up here, like, unless you're Chris Broom or something. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, like, <laughs> it's just so steep and, like, for so long as well that you can't really power up at all. God, that sun was bright, hey, this yeah. morning. What position do you like on the bike? Because I see you're sort of on the tops here. Like, do you prefer the tops on the steep stuff or the hoods? Like, the, where you the have drops? It? Yeah, no, as in, like, the hoods where you're sort of sitting more upright when you're holding it. Like, that Oh, I like getting more... As, I think when you're, like, where I am now, it's a bit more yeah, aero. Yeah, because, like, where Harley is on the left, a lot of people prefer that. I think when it's, like, less steep. I think when it gets so steep, your weight, you sort of want to have a bit further forward. Like, yeah. On, on the drops. And out the saddle, do you like getting out the saddle a lot or...? I hardly got out the saddle for this climb, yeah. actually. But normally I get out a little bit more. Maybe today I was just, I, I think don't know, just stomping on the pedals and not. Really, I just didn't think to get yeah, out. Yeah, I think a lot of people get out the saddle due to necessity because they don't have the gears. Like, yeah. I, I was really, like, struggling not getting out the saddle just because when you're going, like, at, like, 50 cadence, it just feels way more natural to get out of the saddle. But I guess here, like, even Harley had to get out of the saddle on a 34, 32. So it's like... <laughs> Yeah. I mean, these climbs are, are very, like, I think it's the length of the climb, though, that really, like, sets this one apart. Because a lot of climbs are this steep and get up to 20%, but it's just the number of kickers they're on for how long it is. It's just, like, it's pretty much unrivaled as well. Um, but also mentally, I, I found it quite hard as well because it's straight. Like, you can't yeah, see where you've you just, gone. It's just such a, it feels, it feels a lot longer than it is because it's only a 2.74 kilometer climb. Average is 10%. Yeah, it's like, it's like basically like no, the same elevation as Norton's, but just half the distance, pretty much. Yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah it's pretty... It's a, it's a tough climb. I think it's also quite nice. There's not too much traffic here, so you can yeah, ride side by good. side, like, not too... Not, <laughs> not too much go, traffic. Yeah, I know. Like no, no, there's, like, cars outside. everywhere. Okay, okay. <laughs> but normally, there isn't too much traffic. Um, yeah. Like, going down, there was a bit, because we're all heading into work. We're, like, going up, it's totally... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's like we've cursed it now. I think we cursed it, Yeah. But Think here so. your numbers are like dropping a little bit, I guess, on this on when it so it starts to like flatten off, it's quite hard to keep the same power all the way. Yeah. But when like here, what were you really thinking? Because I feel like this is when it starts to get quite tough because you've got one more kicker to go and it's like pretty brutal at this part. Oh, I was just thinking like I just want to keep it consistent because Harley wanted me to go all the way to the yeah. um drinking fountain at Norden. So I was like, I'm not gonna sprint. Yeah. Because I have 
like still at least a K or two to go. Yeah. Did you look at your power at all in this or not? On time trials, I try not to look at the power just so I can like focus on holding a wheel or just sometimes like if I look at my watts and they're high, I'm like, oh shit. Like, am yeah, I going to be able like to hold that? Out, so it psychs me out. So normally like if I were to be doing a solo TT, I'd look at it for the first minute so I can get the rhythm. But then when I'm going, I just feel it and just... Yeah. yeah I, I mean, you know how hard you can hard. go yeah. for 10 minutes. Like... I think it's more like the first five or first like couple minutes where you're like, you it's quite easy to go out too up. hard. But yeah, for sure, because you're on fresh legs. And especially this one, because it's quite steep at the beginning. So you can really, well, even like Harley did that. We got up to sort of like 350, 380 watts, yeah. which is a bit like way too hard. You're, too you're not going to be able to sustain that forever. But I think also the good thing about this climb is that drafting doesn't really help. Like Norton's, you can get like you drop you a minute off Norton's your time. Norton's is or, such a drafting climb. Yeah, exactly. Even at like twenty k's an hour, fifteen k's an hour, the draft helps a lot. But here at seven k's an hour, like the draft means nothing. Like, it's, <laughs> it looks so slow. <laughs> I know it looks I like you're fucking you. crawling up this, but it's like in reality, it's, it's so fast. steep. <laughs> like it's getting up to like seventeen percent here, which I think most people would end up like walking at this part. Like this is where it's really, really horrible to try and like. Try and just keep the effort going. Yeah, the last bit. But then... Yeah, you can see, like... gradient. It's pretty much... (laughs) Sorry about the noise. (laughs) Background noise. Uh, We're not doing the best ways, but anyway. We can see, like, above that, everyone else is pretty much, like, riding on their own, just trying to get up the climb. There's a lot of, like... (laughs) There's a lot of grinding uh, happening ahead. But, Tori, are you okay? And really drops here, like, 60k. Yeah, I think I just... Oh, because I actually, I reckon I was in the 42 then. Yeah. And it's just so look at Harley, like, steep. weaving across the road. It's like, this is... It was so, it's just such a steep climb. I, do you know what? Back in the day, I used to have panic attacks going up steep hills. And one time I had a panic attack on this hill. Just because, like, this one time, Dan took me on a 30% <laughs> flight, like, hill. And I fell off. And I just, I got this panic, like, feeling that I won't be able to unclip. And I'll just fall over and hurt myself or damage my bike. But yeah. so it's, like, good. Now I'm used to it. And I was just, like, concentrating on riding and... Just getting over fears. Oh, here we go. Out the saddle. Yeah. You need to, I guess, have the confidence to do it, like, on the steep stuff. Because it, it yeah. can be pretty intimidating just looking up and seeing, like, a 20% wall. And seeing a wall. wall. Yeah, I'm exactly. I'm okay at the 20s, but when it gets above, like, 25, I'm just Yeah, like, it really changes that. Like, like, last 5%, it suddenly makes it so much harder than what it is. The yeah. sun was pretty bright today, actually. It was all pretty blind. It was blind. really bright. Even if, like, you're sunny. Yeah, really look blind. at you. You're, like, dancing with the bike. Like, dancing like last. Weaving across the road. Like, look <laughs> at the extra Ks you're, like, picking up, just weaving across. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely... Oh, up to 25% here. I think that's the highest I've ever seen. That's pretty crazy. Like, it's, Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't quite notice that. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Cadence is lifting up yeah, again. Yeah, your cadence is finally <laughs> coming up. But this is, like... I don't know, most people climbing at like 8 k's an hour, they think it's like rubbish, but for a 20% wall, like that's very, very fast. Yeah. But you kept pushing like all the way, which is quite impressive because a lot of people now, I think when the gradient starts to slacken, a lot of people sort of give up or like mm. find it hard to keep pushing just because it's pretty much over. I reckon it's just like a, a wake up call to the legs. Like you just feel a bit more fresher because it's yeah. flattening off and you can just stomp down and just pick up speed and it just feels good. Yeah, I think it, often if you just, like, it, because that part, you're on, like, such a low cadence, if you sort of spin up a bit more, you yeah. generally feel like you can, like... Go a bit harder. Yeah, and just get the let the legs recover a bit before you end up doing another one of those real big kickers. But I think, yeah, we're pretty much coming towards the end of this now. And it's just, like, this part is really where you just got to concentrate and, like, realise there's, like, one or two minutes left and, like, you don't want to mess it up at the end because you've, like, been suffering this whole the way whole up the climb. Way. And then, like, if you fuck it up in the last, like, two minutes because you just don't go hard enough. Like, how do you make sure you go hard enough? Because a lot of people, well, like, struggle, I because, think. Because, like, I wasn't finishing here. I kept going to the drinking fountain. If I was... I mean, I used to do rowing, so I used to do, like, sprints in between the, the like, races. And, like, a 250 metre, you'd sprint all the way home. Yeah. But with cycling, I'm trying to learn just to keep the watts consistent. Maybe, like, at the end, it'll lift a little bit with the adrenaline. But I want to try, like make myself go all out the whole way so at the end I'm literally like just about to fall off my bike not have a massive sprint at the end and like just have all this power because it just means that I didn't push hard enough throughout yeah for sure like you shouldn't be able to increase your power like at the end because you should just be so dead so you come through this little dodgy thing that was that car uh, but this is basically the end of the Norton the segment here uh Tori kept going to the like basically the drink fountain on Norton Summit um and I think you got QOM didn't you for that which is pretty solid. Uh, but there's Louis. He did a decent effort as well. Yeah, Louis did well. So it's there fun. we go. 
cheers for watching. Uh, I think Tori's going to have a video similar, so check our channel out. Um, and cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next vid. Bye.